came to Bombay, I had only a degree in physics and mathematics and uh, I had no intention of taking, in fact, even if I had an intention, there was no way I could have joined any animation course and study, because there were no animation schools, there was no, no workshops, there were no other studios that, uh, where one could go and train as an apprentice. That was totally starting from almost zero. And at that time I started drawing cartoons and sending them off to ma magazines. And there was an announcement uh, that uh, somebody from Walt Disney Studio was in, in, Bo in Bombay and he was going to train people in animation for films division. It was setting up, it was just, just set up a cartoon film unit. Now, I was very intrigued. And uh, because he was somebody from Walt Disney Studio, I thought I should meet him somehow. Claire Weeks looked at my drawings and he said, these are good. Have you applied? I said, no. I, I, was, I first wanted to be sure that I would get in. So he said, uh, it's okay, you get in, but there are some tests later on, practical tests you have to pass and then you can come. And uh, what he did was he brought two key drawings. It was the character Lady. One was a frontal view and one was a profile, slightly turned. And he said, now put an in-between pose on. I said, I don't know what an in-between is. So he said, uh, I'll show you how it is to be done. So there was a light box. He put these two drawings there on the thing, turned on the light and put a third uh, blank paper on top. And then he said, just flip these two drawings and you can see the movement from uh, front to profile and back and forth. And then you draw now on the third paper between the two and you try to get an action. Well, that was the first time I ever tried my hand at animation of any kind. And uh, I got selected and that's how I landed up in the Films Division. Cartoon Film Unit was, you know, was for the purpose of popularizing or telling people about the five-year plans and what they're supposed to do. This were meant essentially for uh, the planned publicity program for propaganda. Moji could not understand how planning for the whole country could be done by a small group of people. What are you chaps doing here anyway? We are the planning commission. So, you're the fellows who make plans, huh? Wise guys, dreamers. The basic idea was that we should start our, our training program with a, lo a slightly longer film, about 17 minutes, I think, 15, 17 minutes long, which was a Jataka story. And it was called The Ban India. So all we did was set in the traditional classical hand-drawn animation, drawing and then uh, getting the drawings traced on transparent celluloid sheets. They were colored and they were put on painted backgrounds. And then we had a very nice Rostrum camera, which uh, the American government had gifted. We used to do the shooting on that Rostrum camera. It was an acme. And later on, they also got another Oxbury animation camera, which was a huge monster of a thing. Now, it was pretty tough as a first film to work on because it was four-legged animal, the deer and the baby deer and all that. And another thing is the movements had to be realistic. They were not stylized. Their leader was the Banyan deer. He was very beautiful. Stars fell from his dark eyes, gold from his skin. He was kind and just. Someone you could always trust. His herd had nothing to fear. So meanwhile, my contacts with people outside film station was getting stronger. So more and more, I was being uh, attracted to the commercial side of it. So uh, finally what happened was people in Madras, Prasad Productions, they have imported optical bench for opticals and also a Roxbury camera and they set it up in Madras. They approached me and said, would you like to come and take over as the head of the department? I said, I can't come to Madras and uh, you know, work with you there because I have my family here and I'm more comfortable working in Bombay. If you can bring the equipment over to Bombay, then I'll leave film station and I'll join it. And they brought it and they set it up in film center in Tardev. And then uh, I joined them. Most of the film producers that we worked with who came to us and said, we want some uh, animated titles and we'll say, 
okay, we'll do it. And she said, how, how long will it take? I said, it will take us about three, four weeks. She said, my God, no, we, we are releasing the film next week. You know, that's the kind of people who used to come to us. People who had absolutely no idea how animation is done and how long it takes, how much time and how much labor it takes. I made my first independent film as a director, producer, designer, animator, everything. I made a film called Bap Re Bap. It was about the family planning. It was sponsored by the Family Planning Association of India. called uh, You Said It. It was about uh, a character who represents the Indian common man. So the documentary sort of explains how democracy works. Men who wish to speak for a group of citizens residing in a particular area or constituency present themselves as candidates. Considering them carefully, the common man makes his choice unaffected by enticements or threats. Once the producer, Jindal, and he was the producer for Shacharad Ki Kirlani. Ray was here and he said he would like to meet you. So I went and met him at the Taj and uh, that was a very nice meeting. In fact, I never met somebody who was so well organized and who knew exactly what he wanted. When the government has any complaint from the Most of the other work that we did for feature films was uh, mainly animated uh, titles like Dor Do Panch and Hasina Man Jayagi. B.R. Chopra came to me and said he has got a song, he has recorded a song and he wanted that to be uh, animated. It was about Adam and Eve and the story of the serpent and uh, so he can't, couldn't have at that time shot it live anyway. Na aaj tha, na kal tha. Meanwhile, I had started already my company called uh, Ramohan Biographics. Animation was still not something that was very popular or anything because people were not too sure whether as a career it will work or not. People used to come and say, I would like to, to learn animation. I would say, come along. And whatever project was going on, we would give them some jobs that they could handle and they learned on the, on the job. Fortunately, we had, I had some good artists who had, uh, you know, they had worked with me for enough length of time to have confidence to even handle project on their own. And they used to guide the newcomers. This way, I did not grow very large. In fact, at, at its uh, height, I think he had at the most about 25 people. Our studio never grew larger than that. But that was right up to the 90s. Uh, one thing that happened early in the 90s was, not in fact even earlier, it's 86. Uh, a Japanese uh, director who, was, who had read the Ramayana in the translation in Japanese, he said, this is a story that works for animation. I said, I fully agree. We are trying to convince the government of India to let us make this film as a joint venture. Ramayana is a very sensitive subject because just then, 
there was some trouble with this Ayodhya issue and all that. So I said, they said, please don't touch Ramayana, do something, Panchasantra or whatever you want, but not Ramayana. Um, Yugo Sako, that is the name of the Japanese producer. He said, I am going ahead and I'll find funds from Japanese sources. But he said, uh, I still want you to come and work with me and uh, because I want a collab Indian collaborator. So we did a lot of work, pre-production work here. We got a script written by Pandit Narendra Sharma. We got uh, the entire dialogue track recorded here with the Pearl Padamsi directing the voices. We had uh, Vanraj Bhatia doing the songs. We even did some storyboarding and some of the particularly the song sequences. And my main problem was that I, I did not know Japanese, I couldn't speak Japanese and many of the people who were working there could not speak English. We soon found that the best way to communicate is by actually drawing. Meanwhile, uh, while I was going up and down to Japan and back, I had uh, a call from somebody from UNICEF. They had developed an idea called about a girl called Mina. Now she was to represent the uh, girl child in South Asia. Dekho, Mina, mera bhai us kate huye peed ke thoot ko uthane ke liye lever ka istemal kar raha hai. Ye chhad pehle tane ke upar jaati hai, phir peed ke thoot ke niche, phir wah dusre sire ko dabata hai. Dekha, ise kehte hai lever. Aao, Mina, meri madad karo. Ha. In Bangladesh, it was very well received, and even today, the children, every child in Bangladesh seems to know Meena. By that time, I had almost reached a dead end. We had about 20, 25 people. Could not grow much larger than that. Our space was also limited. Ronnie Skruwala, who was head of UTV, he approached me and said that he would like to set up a large, much larger studio and take on outsourced work. And uh, when uh, Ronnie made this offer, I said, I will, we'll try the, this outsource with characters and uh, layouts and storyboards all made outside by st uh, Canadian studios. And they would come and all we had to do was see, <laughs> see donkey work as we used to call them, you know, the hard work of make hundreds of drawings. And then we make them and send them away and then we never see the film again. But one thing that happened, I did realize that because we took these, took on these uh, outsourced work, we had visiting directors coming from um, studios outside and they worked with our Indian uh, animators. They had a lot of exposure to what the West wanted, what was the benchmark, what level was accepted as uh, good animation. But by the 2002, I had completed my contract with Ronnie and I said, I would like to move on. I had a couple of friends with whom I had started one of the earliest computer animation studios called Computer Graffiti Private Limited. It was in Tardev, in a small place. And uh, that is where we started doing these initial experiments in uh, computer animation. Say elephant balls. And uh, my main purpose was to see uh, how people who were training as, uh, as traditional animators, how would they fare in 3D. So when they were given some initial training in uh, Maya or 3D or 3D Max or something. They turned out to be very good. But they used to come and then just uh, work with us and they pick it up very fast and then they left because there was so much demand for uh, people with these 
experience in this quality of work. So I said, if this is what we are going to do, if we are going to train people, then let us have a school. 2006, I set up a graffiti animation school. And that ran very well for three years after the recession there was there. And many studios closed down and many people, animators who had been working there were uh, laid off. So it was a bad scene. And after that, in, in, the animation industry has not quite recovered yet in India. What happened was a series of disasters, even in terms of the feature films that were made here. You know, after the success of one film, it was Hanuman, not a single film has done well. And that has now turned people against it. I mean, they're scared of taking up animation as a career. Some, uh, one main thing is that in India, we still haven't got the support of the government. In fact, we did. I did go and meet uh, the secretary once. And we told them that we need government to help us. He said, why, why do we need any help? Uh, he, he has read about all these glorious reports written by Fiki, you know, which says that we are doing some so many million dollars and then we'll be in five years, we'll be doing some so many billion dollars worth of business. So he says, you people are minting money. Why do you want government to help? So that's their attitude. But their priorities are, I don't know, when will they ever think of animation for people? They say we have to think of food and health and all these basic necessities. See, if you go to any middle class Indian family and if you ask them what do you value most for your children, you'll say education. So instead of making, trying to make funny films, the kind of films that uh, Hollywood can do much better, why can't we do something that uh, we are good at, you know, educating, uh, we make good films about education, or whatever subject. Anime, animation will make it more interesting because edu learning anything need not be boring. Even if you use simple devices like flash and so on, it's still worth it. I think things will improve now because generally the uh, feeling in the country is one of optimism that things are beginning to improve, things are beginning to change and uh, if we have the right connection, if you have the right people, if you know them, and you have to get the bureaucrats to believe in them, because ultimately ministers and uh, people who run the government depend on the bureaucrats to give them the idea. So if they cooperate with you, then I think we can bounce back. There is no reason for pessimism, I don't think so.